another media day, picture day. They rode around quickly. And uh, it's good to see all of our guys out there. Good to see about 35 freshmen jump in the picture with me. That means we got a lot of ball players down the road uh, here at South Carolina. And I think a lot of them may play this year, who knows. But uh, anyway, we got a good group of guys. And uh, I, I think we've uh, assembled, uh, hopefully, one of our best teams ever. Time will tell if it becomes a real good team or not. Uh, but the first four days of practice been been pretty good uh, and again it's just practice we got a ways to go as we all know uh, we were not a dominant team by any means last year seventh in offense seventh in defense special teams didn't do much so if we're going to have a big year we got we got to play some ball a lot better uh, than we have here lately uh, but we're looking forward to it and uh, looking forward to the season so we're in preparation everything's on schedule and hopefully it'll, it'll work out January, when we all meet in here. Excellent. All right, any questions on anything? Please raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. <clears throat> I, I may also add, uh, before the season starts, that uh, we're extremely proud uh, of the great point average of our football team. We continue to set records, I think, the last three semesters at 271, I believe it is. Uh, we graduate 25 football players last calendar year, all time record around here. Uh, Raymond Harrison, our head academic advisor and Maria Hickman uh, deserve a lot of the credit for making sure our guys are in class and taking the right courses, going to study hall, tutoring and so forth. So really, really proud that uh, our guys are graduating at a very high percentage now. Hasn't always been that way around here as you know. But uh, our guys do a good job in the classroom. Proud of them. <clears throat> okay. After the first practice, you were raving about the team, the team speed, and the way that the way they worked out. Has that continued over the last uh, three practices? Here yeah, pretty much so. Yeah, pretty much so. We've got uh, a little bit more speed out there than uh, it seemed we had last year. Uh, several freshmen, several new players uh, that are on the team now. So, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll show up on game day. <coughs> Yeah. The, the big time recruits who come in here um, always seem to draw a lot more attention. Um, your impressions of Jadavian and how he'll be able to handle a, a, what's going to be a pretty big spotlight for him? Yeah, Jadavian is a is a, is a well-rounded young man. Uh, he doesn't, uh, you know, like I think Travian said the other day, he's, he's not a cocky kid. He's not coming in here talking this, that, and the other. He's just trying to be the best player he can be. He's blended in very well with the guys. and. Uh, he realized he's got a ways to go to work on and so forth. So he's, he's practicing hard, doing a good job, uh, but we definitely plan on him uh, getting a lot of action first game on. Steve, uh, again on Shadavia, but have there been times when even you said, wow, this kid's as good as people say that he is? I mean, have you seen things out of him that that, that make you think he can live up to some of the stuff people are talking about? Well, we haven't played yet, and we haven't really scrimmaged. We're just out there in sh shorts and helmets, uh, pretty much, although you know, we put shoulder pads on the other day. So we haven't done all that much, but uh, oh, obviously he can come off the ball. And he can run around just about all of our tackles right now. Uh, but it's still ways off until we really play. Uh, but he's, yeah, he's right on schedule. Uh, I think uh, we're Obviously, his high school plays, when he jumped out at you uh, on the tapes, uh, he just moved at a faster speed than most anybody on the field, uh, it seemed like. So uh, he hasn't really had the opportunity yet to turn it on much. We'll, we'll put him in some scrimmages the uh, latter part of this coming week and uh, let him go then. Then we'll probably really watch him play some. <clears throat> Can you talk about Marcus on what you're expecting him this year? Marcus, what about him? Just what you're expecting for him this year. Well, we're expecting him to have another super year and uh, stay healthy. He's uh, beefed up a little bit, not too much though. But he's, uh, yeah, he's ready to play. And uh, yeah, hopefully he gets his, just as many carries and maybe even more touchdowns. Who knows how it's going to turn out. Uh, but he's ready to go and he's, uh, 
he's a wonderful team guy. Off-season workouts, uh, he, he leads the way. So he's another uh, out, really super player that is also a super teammate. Steve, what is it that makes Alshon so dangerous and so tough to cover, and how good are his hands? The ability to catch the ball, I think, is his biggest quality. That, and he's so big and strong that if a guy's even hanging on him, he'll he have a tendency to, to come down with the ball. Uh, but he's getting better running routes, cutting off the right foot, getting open, using his feet. He's got excellent feet. And uh, we're trying to get him to use them just a little bit more to get open. And uh, so he's, he's working hard, too. He stays out after every practice, catches, catches a few balls and so forth. Uh, he and his brother and Bruce Ellington were in the indoor facility that they had rained, and they stayed after the runs to catch a few balls here and there. So he's a good worker also. He and Alshon are a lot alike as far as being good teammates also. Excellent teammates. Even when he's good, I mean, if he's covered, he can, he's still yeah. can catch Oh, yeah, we tell our quarterbacks, just get it up where he can get his hands on it. You know, if the guy's standing with him here, just throw it up high over here. The guy's over there, throw it up high over here. Just try to put it where... Uh, he can get his hands on it, and that, that, those are good odds if we can get the ball in that position. Steve, over here. Yes, sir. You kind of uh, have had issues in the past over your quarterback sort of uh, lack of being a student of the game, putting in the extra time and all that. Uh, leaving off the off-field stuff, just as far as the, the quarterback and, and what he does and what he knows and and how he uh, sort of radiates his leadership. What kind of differences do you see in him now from um, a year or two ago? Well, again, we've only been with him through these four practices, but uh, I, I can tell he's just got a better commitment level. Uh, he, he's not goofing around as much as he used to. Well, he's not goofing around at all, really. Uh, but he's trying, to, he, he's trying to really play the position. He's trying to make good decisions out there. and. Uh, and he has. He's, he's made better decisions than in the past. So we were watching the tape the other day, and I said, I said that's the way to get up. He hit about the fourth choice on, on a pass play, and the first three were all covered up. And here came the fourth one, and he, he immediately went to it. And I said, now that's playing quarterback. You pick out the guy that's open and try to throw it to him. And um, so maybe maybe he's maybe he's learning, and uh, his fifth year is going to be his best, we hope. Connor's done well also. And a lot of the other quarterbacks have done pretty well. Andrew Clifford has been a little bit surprising. He's made some good throws here and there. Tanner McAvoy's made a few plays as a true freshman. So we're, we're in good shape. I really believe we're in good shape at quarterback. Coach, can you take us through the, the timeline with Brandon Shell yesterday? Do you expect him to return? To yeah, practice? Brandon had a little heat-related problem there. We, uh, you know, all the other guys were fine, but uh, you know, sometimes those big. Big guys, we, we should have held him out, to tell you the truth, from that maybe that last run across the field. Uh, but he got a little dizzy and so forth, and our trainers acted quickly and uh, got his temperature down, got him in the cold tank there. And as a precaution, I think they, they went ahead and took him in and uh, checked him out at the hospital. And, and he was back at the meeting uh, in the afternoon. So uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's always a scare anytime one of your players uh, gets a little dizzy and so forth. So our trainers were super, though. Clint Haggard, he, he was textbook by the book on how to handle it. Nate Peck, the assistant trainer, and Dr. Jason Stacy, well, they were right on top of it immediately. So it uh, worked out. But that was, uh, that was a good lesson for us because I, I never want to see that, hopefully again, uh, a player you know get dizzy and so forth from the heat. And we should have held him out. He, he just wasn't ready to, you know, he's a big young man. He, he wasn't ready to run across the field that many times. So uh, fortunately, it, it, everything's fine now, but we're, we're going to try to make sure we don't push those big guys, uh, like the little guys. The little guys, they can run all day, but some of those big guys just, uh, they can't quite do that. So we'll, we'll do a better job of monitoring how much running some of the big guys do. Do you think we'll talk this tonight? I'm not sure of what the trainers have for him tonight. I imagine he'll be out there doing something. I don't know if it's full go or not. Mm -hmm. If everybody knows about Alshon and how much attention he's going to draw from opponents, uh, mm -hmm. what's your assessment of the rest of the receiving core and what they're able to do well until they're catching the ball and getting mm -hmm. open, that sort of thing? Oh, they've done very well. And uh, 
Ace Sanders, uh, Bruce Ellington, uh, those are two really quick, fast guys. Uh, Jason Barnes, is, uh, he's done well in preseason. Uh, Lamar Scruggs has actually done some good things. He, he had his best practice uh, yesterday ever as a Gamecock, Lamar Scruggs. We started giving him a practice ball. But we forgot to, I guess. Uh, he made a couple of leaping catches. Yeah, he, he was fired up uh, the other day, Lamar Scruggs. So we got a lot of good receivers, and they, they've all been here a while, just about. Um, uh, amazingly, Bruce Ellington, he pretty much knows the offense. He was here this summer, and I think Ace Sanders actually taught him most of it. Uh, so he's he, he knows what to do, pretty much uh, everything. So, we're yeah, we got plenty of guys other than Alshon. You talked about having uh, being better at quarterback now. It hasn't been the case very often since you've been here. How difficult has it been for you to build a, a stable mm -hmm. quarterback? Well, I, you know, you look around the country, and uh, most teams say they don't have a great quarterback. So it, it doesn't happen everywhere. Uh, and our quarterback play hasn't been that poor. My goodness, uh, our receivers are setting all kinds of school records. Somebody's got to be throwing to them, you know what? Sydney, Kenny McKinley, and now Alshon. Guys, they hold about every record we got, don't they? Pretty close to it. So our quarterback play has not been that, that bad. So we know, we're, I guess we're waiting on an All-American Heisman Trophy guy or something like that, but uh, they play pretty well. They play pretty, pretty well, but obviously we think uh, we can play better. And uh, so I think the play will be better this year. Where does Demir Bird compare in terms of the fastest players? Yeah, players I forgot, players I forgot. I knew there was somebody was leaving out there. Demir Bird, yeah, all three of those guys are at the same position right now. We may need to move them around a little bit. Uh, yeah, Demir, he may be the fastest guy on the team. He may be. We haven't raced them all yet, but uh, certainly he was a, a class track athlete in high school. He, he ran a lot of national events, 60 meters, 100 meters, and so forth. And uh, he's already proven he can catch the ball. He, he can go deep and catch it. He's got he's got pretty good hands. So he's he's a guy. There's a place for him as a return man also. He and Bruce Ellington, DJ Swearinger. Uh, DJ's probably going to be our first kickoff return guy because he's uh, he hits it hard. He can break some arm tackles, and uh, he's a physical young man. So. Not sure who will be the punt return guy right now. Stefan Gilmore is back there for punts right now, along with Bruce and uh, Demir and so forth. So, really impressed with uh, John Butler, our special team coach. I just, I know I say that every year, but I, I, I truly believe our special teams are going to be better this year. One of these years, I'm going to be right about that. I think it's this year. I think it's this year. I think it's this year. <laughs> The last couple years with you guys being able to recruit better, how has it changed the culture within the program? Well, it's, it's changed the expectations, certainly. And uh, the reason we've been able to recruit better, uh, our athletic director, our president, uh, have really said we we got to get our facilities up to par. And our boosters have pitched in. Uh, I always remember Lee Corso said Spurrier can never win in South Carolina because they don't have the money the other schools have. And he said either they, they don't have the money or their boosters with the money aren't giving it. Well, so, well we've proven them wrong. Our boosters with the, the big money are giving. And, uh, and we've been able to get our facilities up at a level with the Florida, Georgia, Tennessee's, maybe even a little bit better in certain areas. So we've got that done, and then we've really tried to work our state. And uh, if you can get the top players in your state that, that gives you an opportunity actually to pick a few out of the other states too. Uh, it's a common fact that uh, really good football players like to play with other good football players. I was watching uh, one of those NFL shows the other day about all these guys signing with the Eagles. And the announcer said, these guys want to play with Michael Vick. And I started thinking, Marcus Lattimore might have been our best recruiter last year. Uh, I guarantee you, everybody came through, Jadavion and all them guys, Marcus spent time with about every one of them. So, uh, so what I'm trying to say is you get a top guy, that helps you get the next one. And the next one, is a, it's a snowball effect there. It really is. And uh, that's, that's what gives us a chance. That doesn't mean we're going to win big. That just means it gives us a little better chance than if we didn't have these guys. I know you had not gotten into pads yet, though, but what are you most pleased with with about this team so far? 
Oh, like you said, we haven't done anything much yet, uh, but the attitude's good. Camaraderie's uh, very good amongst the guys, and uh, they, they know how to work pretty hard. Uh, but we, we're still a ways off. We, you know, we haven't played anybody yet, so we're just uh, we're looking forward to this week of practice. And tonight's practice is the first step, and uh, just go one one day at a time. Back to the room. You've mentioned Bruce Ellington's name several mm -hmm. times. Talk about the learning curve he's going to have, and can we see mm -hmm. any, him having an